welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to be setting up a Raspberry Pi with an uninterruptible power supply or UPS. Specifically we're going to be using this Waveshare UPS kit which has a very interesting design because it uses pogo pins to connect to the Pi which keeps all of our options open. So let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we have the Waveshare UPS for the Raspberry Pi, which I purchased from the Pi Hut here in the UK for £21, and which is sold on the Waveshare website for $22.99. Note that there were two versions of this available, and that this is the UPS hat. B, which costs a dollar more than the other version, but which I think is a much better product for reasons that I'll shortly demonstrate. Anyway, it's time to get inside the box, and I've got on hand Mr. Scissors and Stanley the Knife, but neither are needed. This box isn't even sealed, so I can just do that and go straight in, and we can see what we have. Here is a power adapter. We don't use the Pi's own adapter. This is an 8.4 volt adapter we use with the, the UPS board. A bit of packaging. We've got uh, the UPS thing itself. Let's take it out of its crinkle, crinkle packet. This is a beautifully easy unboxing. I can cope with this. Here is the little board. We'll take a look at that in a second. And we've also got, as we can see here, some mounting hardware and a little mounting plate, things like that. But the one thing we haven't got is any batteries, which are probably not included in a kit like this because there are all sorts of different regulations about shipping batteries separate to normal things. But over here, I purchased these, which are two 3.7 volt 18650 lithium iron rechargeable cells. And as you can probably see from the ratings on the label, these are 2,500 milliamp hour. They cost me six pounds each, bringing the total cost of building the UPS for the Raspberry Pi to £33 here in the UK. And these are the kinds of cells that you often find inside laptop and other battery units, and in all kinds of rechargeable devices. And like all lithium-ion batteries, they do need to be treated with respect, which means storing them in non-conductive containers like the tubes that come in when they're not in use, keeping them at room temperature, low humidity, things like that to avoid fire. And to get them out, is I think quite tricky because the cases here are very, very solid and you can't just pull the end of these caps off. But I think what you can do, if we bring in a piece of the pliers like this, I think this will work, I've not tried this yet. Let's have a go. Can we get this off like that? Oh, we can, it worked. I've got out one of the cells, let's also get out the other. There we are, lots of uh, thumping noises there. So these are the cells we're going to use in the Waveshare UPS. So let's go back to the unit itself, which can be used with pretty much any Raspberry Pi. Certainly you can use this with a Raspberry Pi 3A, 3B, 3B plus and a Raspberry Pi 4, which is pretty much all the Pis out there in the wild today. And as we saw previously, the, the batteries go into the base of this unit. Got to be careful to put them in the right way around, which will be that way around for this one here. A bit easier to get these wrong when with, for example, an AA cell because the ends are less distinct. But if you do put a battery in the wrong way around, there's a nice little safety feature on this board. If I've got it the right way around, there we are. Down here, there are two little warning LEDs. And if you put either battery in the wrong way around, these will light up. So I think that's a nice safety feature. If we flick the board around, on this edge, we've got various connectors and switches and specifically an on-off switch, good and solid down there to turn the whole thing on and off. We've got at the other end here a barrel jack for power for connecting in the mains adapter. And in the middle here, we've got a USB port, which is used as a five volt output. So if you've got peripherals you need to connect to the Pi, you need to power them, you can power them from that socket. I rather like that. And then finally, around the edge over here, we've got a switch labeled boot, which I presume is to cut the power to reboot the Pi without having to turn everything off. Finally, on the next corner, we have the pogo pins, which I think are such an important feature of this product. And as you can see, these are little springy pins. They've got springs inside them. And these are what connect to the Raspberry Pi. And specifically, they connect to pin two on a Pi, which is the five volt input, to pins three and five, which allow the hat to communicate with the Pi using I squared C, so we can monitor the UPS 
in use. And then finally, there's pin 9 here, which is the ground connection. And if we bring in a Raspberry Pi, this is a Raspberry Pi 4, you can see the basic way this works is that the pogo pins down here will make connection with the base of the GPIO connector. And this is slightly unusual, but I think in this particular instance, it's a very good thing. And that's because, as I said previously, there are two versions of this UPS hat, and the first version does have the hat going on top of the Raspberry Pi. And whilst there is a pass-through for the GPIO connector, I think this version of the hat, the B version with the pogo pins, is better because not only is the GPIO connector completely free to use as you wish, but also you can mount pretty much anything you want on the top of the Pi, including cooling solutions which might interfere with a hat. So I do like this particular design. Oh, and the final thing I've not mentioned is the power output of the UPS, rather important, which is five volts at a peak of five amps with a continuous current output of 2.5 amps. And this should be perfectly sufficient to power any Raspberry Pi along with any connected devices. Now, guess what time it is? Is it cup of tea time? No. Is it talking to ducks time? Also no. Rather, it's now assembly time. It's time to put this UPS together. And whilst there are no instructions that come in the kit, what we do get are five of every screw and standoff required. And I think that's a good trade-off. No instructions, but extra screws in particular. So you can drop one on the floor, lose it, and still put things together with no problems. So let's start off by fitting the standoffs. There we go, that was nice and easy. Let's move these things out of the way. And now we need to put the pie on the top. And of course it needs to align with the pogo pins. And that I think is gonna be slightly tricky. So I think I'll start off putting some screws in loosely, then try and get that to work. And I think I've got that in okay. The pogo pins are correctly connected to the base of the, the pie. So uh, we can now put the, uh, the batteries in, which is very exciting. There we are, and if you're wondering, it's a very, very tight fit, so there's no problem having them on the base of the board. And uh, the final thing is there is a base piece we can put on there. We don't have to use it, I guess. We could just stand it like that, but it's better to have the, the base piece on. This is one of these bits of perspex with the stuff to remove. There we are, we have our clear base, and this now will flick on like this with the, uh, the flat screws. And uh, there we are, our very lucky Raspberry Pi 4 is now equipped with an uninterruptible power supply. Greetings, here I am back again and everything is now set up and running. As you can see, everything is, is working fine. And if we go across to the, the Raspberry Pi desktop, there's a few things I would point out. The first one is there's quite a good wiki for this product, which is available here, as you can see, to tell you all about using the WaveShare UPS. And one of the things this tells you is that before you turn on the Pi for the first time, if your batteries are completely flat, you should let the batteries charge up a bit. And I didn't do that. I read the advice, forgot about it, turned it on, and the Pi gave me a warning indicator up here at the top corner for under voltage. And that was because the batteries were taking so much current to charge up that uh, the Pi wasn't getting enough current initially. But it didn't cause the Pi to crash, it worked perfectly well, but it's best to leave the batteries a bit of charging time, five or 10 minutes at least, when you first start using the unit. Second thing to point out is that on this page, we can download some code to monitor the UPS in use. And these are basically just a few commands to execute in the terminal to install a piece of Python code, which as you can see is on the last line down here. Or if you wish, you can install that code directly. If you go to demo code here and click on the, that, it'll download a zip file from which you can extract the, uh, the relevant code. But however you do it, you end up with a piece of code, which is uh, down here, all ready to run. If I run this code, there we are, it runs. And what it's showing you is what's going on in respect of the actual UPS unit, not the Pi itself. So this is the input voltage to the UPS unit. It's showing the current currently going into the batteries, which is pretty low because the batteries are 
pretty highly charged, 90% or more charged. And one thing I would point out, again, I got wrong initially. I'm not having a good day today. Maybe my brain is malfunctioning. But anyway, the code we're running here uses I squared C, the I squared C interface on the Pi to communicate with the UPS. And for that to work, you must turn it on first. So you must go into a preferences and Raspberry Pi configuration, and then go into interfaces over here and make sure that I squared C is enabled. If it's not enabled, this code won't work. Anyway, here it clearly does work. And what I thought I'd do is a thing that seems really counterintuitive, but I'll do it, which is to take away the mains power. So if I go across here, the reason I've got the adapter on my desk is so I can do this, I should be able to take it out and uh, the Pi is still running. That really doesn't feel right, does it? And as you might have noticed, the current has now gone negative. This means that current is being drawn, power is being drawn from the batteries by the Pi. Whereas if I plug it back in like uh, this, we will see the current goes positive. That's the current going in to charge the batteries. So there we are, the UPS works. Sometimes I've got lots of technical stuff to tell you about. Today I haven't because basically it's a UPS and it does its job of powering the Pi, even if you disconnect the mains power. But in fact, there is one more thing I should tell you about, which is as I've been experimenting with this and setting it up and getting it to work, at one point I accidentally thumped the table quite hard. And when I did that, the Pi reset, which is not ideal to have a UPS that resets when, when you, you thump the table, is it? Kind of defeats the purpose. And I think what happened was there was a bit of vibration which caused one of the pogo pins powering the Pi to temporarily disconnect. And what I did was to actually check the screws on the unit to check they were all in solidly, and they weren't. And so I've tightened the screws and I haven't had a problem since, but it's just worth pointing this out. I guess the issue is normally when we put risers and screws onto a Pi to mount it somewhere, it doesn't really matter how well they're put in because it's basically holding it in place. But here, the tension in these screws really matters because the Pi has to be held down properly onto the pogo pins or you can have problems with the power getting through to the Pi. Anyway, other than that initial hiccup, I've had no issues. Everything has worked absolutely fine. Adding a UPS to a Raspberry Pi is a great way to try and defend it against power failures that could cause downtime or crashes or SD card corruption if the Pi has to run 24-7 as, for example, a small server or a NAS or some kind of IoT or monitoring device. And it's also very handy indeed to be able to take your Pi unplug it, move it somewhere else, plug it in again, and not have to reboot because the power is maintained by the UPS. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Hey.